Hello friends, I am Ankit Kamiya from SmartSync, a SEBI registered investment advisory firm. We help retail and h &I clients in their equity and mutual fund portfolios. We also have a stock market learning platform called Mission Smile. For those who don't know about Mission Smile, Mission Smile stands for making new stock market investors learn it through engaging research. Many of our customers and friends requested us to make short videos that help new investors get a hang of the journey of different businesses. So here's our first video on this initiative, Triple S 5 Minute Stock Stories. No PPT, no financials, no charts, and no buy sell recommendations. Immerse into the fascinating story of these interesting businesses here for just five minutes. We start this initiative today with the epic story of Hester Bioscience and its promoters, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. Let's time travel four decades back. It was the veterinary business that chose me and not the other way around, says Rajiv Gandhi, the MD and CEO of Hester Bioscience, looking back at his journey. Born and brought up in Mumbai with humble beginnings, Mr. Gandhi's father used to supply bulk drugs to pharma companies. A commerce graduate, Rajiv, just wished for better businesses with lesser uncertainties. He applied to acquire distribution rights for human medicines as he wanted to move away from trading. He failed. The set channels blocked his entry there. The only offer that came his way was distribution rights for animal health products of pharma major Cinemit India. RG says, and I quote, for me, entering the animal veterinary business was a huge challenge, especially since I was clueless about animals. Never in my life had I visited a poultry farm. And the first time I visited one, I was astounded to see so many chicks together. The only non-vegetarian item I was familiar with was eggs since I ate eggs. RG is still a vegetarian. Lack of domain knowledge about animals never came in between him and his company's success. Way back in the 1980s, there were few distributors of animal health products which forced people to travel long distances to procure them. That was the opportunity for RG and his team. He started farm delivery and became the leading distributor within just two years. RG started supplying disinfectants and other chemicals required by animal farmers. In 1987, Hester Pharma, a private limited company, was formed. RG just thought someday he may do something in the structured pharma space like manufacturing and formulation. Call it luck or a prepared mind, but soon Hester got a sole distributorship for a Japanese company, Gen Corp, for their animal product portfolio. Soon, Gen Corp acquired a poultry vaccine company in the US. Hence, Hester became an international distributor just like that. Studying the international market, RG soon realized that the poultry vaccine prices in India were very high. RG suggested to Gen's US subsidiary that they should explore the possibility of setting up a manufacturing unit in India. And to his utter surprise, they agreed. Now picture this. No experience in manufacturing, no financial strength, just a JV with a foreign company 10% equity to JV partner in lieu of tech transfer. And an IPO was floated in 1994 with no land and only a commitment from a collaborator about technology transfer. RG soon shifted himself from Mumbai to Gujarat to save cost. But production took a lot of time. In the 1997 annual report, you will find this mention. The project got delayed by a year and eight months. By the end of December 1997, 
Hester would probably be the only company in India to produce the entire range of poultry vaccines. Visualize, visualize how small the scale of operation was at that time. Turnover of just 89 lakhs in 97 versus 2 crore in 96 as they reduced the volume in trading of imported goods. In their DRHP, in the, in their DRHP which was released on 17th August 1994, just before the IPO, they projected sales and other income for 97 to be 6.41 crore. Actual sales were just 89 lakhs. So much for projections and spreadsheet models. However, year 2000 was a turnaround year for them. First time after IPO in 1994 that the company earned cash profit. And 2001 was the year of many achievements. Net profit for the first time since IPO, license for 10 new poultry vaccines, agreement with Sensui Incorporation Japan for producing poultry vaccines for them and their brands for their international market. 2002 was the year of new beginnings for them as GIIC, which is the Gujarat Industrial Investment Corporation, came to their rescue. The annual report of that year read as follows. With the settlement with GIIC, the company has wiped out 75% of its accumulated losses. And by the third quarter this year, 100% of the accumulated losses would be wiped out. The loan with GIIC for rupees 2.57 crore was settled for 1.47 crore. 2003 was another interesting year for Hester. They ended their tie with US collaborator MBL. Reason? They desired to pursue international market to improve profitability and capacity utilization. And what was the impact? Savings of 15 lakhs in royalty and savings of 30 lakhs by stopping import of raw material from this US collaborator. And Hester utilized all these savings in setting up an R&D unit in poultry vaccine. Hester's entry into the export was through a surprised FA or FAO order from Iraq. From Iraq. They filled up the tender for a lark and were shocked when they bagged it. Shipping the products to an unknown Jordanian trading company that delivered the consignment to Iraq without secured payment upfront was a big gamble. We pay too much attention to strategies and capital allocation. There are so many instances like this where it was just plain luck and a gutsy risk-taking ability of the promoter that worked. It could have gone horribly wrong as well, right? In 2014, Hester, in collaboration with Talmud, developed a thermostable Newcastle disease vaccine that withstands a temperature of up to 40 degrees Celsius for a few days. Galmed is an international NGO in Scotland funded by the Gates Foundation. Today, in Tanzania, a country in East Africa, with partial funding from the Gates Foundation, Hester has established a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility with an emphasis on export. The unit will cater to the entire continent of Africa with a capacity of 1.5 billion doses of animal vaccines a year. If you ask RG for his success formula, he says, there has been no script that I have followed. The fight for survival has started my course. Up until now, I have shared with you what has worked for Hester Bio phenomenally in its journey. The past five, six years, though, have been just the opposite. You must be aware of that Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And it surely happened with Hester. The top five things that went wrong with Hester in the last five years are as follows. First, they took six years to establish the unit in Tanzania. And the capacity utilization today, as we speak, is still negligible, to say the least. Second, they marked their entry in Nepal five to six years back with production facilities to cater to government tenders that have still not arrived. 
Third, they invested a lot of money in creating facility for supplying critical substance for the human vaccine at the outbreak of COVID-19. The demand has vanished thanks to COVID being a history now. Fourth, the poultry vaccine market is going through a recession over the last two years due to high prices of feeds. Fifth and final, during this period of lackluster demand and uncertainties, Hester continues its expansion strategies, which have taken a toll on its balance sheet and return ratios. Now, if you are scared after knowing about these five facts about Hester, let me remind you what Warren Buffett says about businesses. A company should be viewed as an unfolding movie, not as a still photograph. It remains to be seen if Hester bounces back from these adversities or is plagued by them for much longer. Let me know in the comment section if you like this new initiative of 5 minute stock stories from Triple S. To get more entertaining and insightful stories on interesting businesses in India, follow us and share our work with your friends who you think can benefit from it. This is Ankit from SmartSync signing off with a promise to come up with a new 5 minute stock story soon. Thank you.